Yo, Snapchat, so Australia has its federal election tomorrow. I'm running for Science Party in Cunningham, so vote one Science Party. Um, but today, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, famous black science man, tweeted out an awesome... So his tweet was that Earth needs a new virtual country called Rationalia, where there only has one line constitution, where every policy needs to be based entirely on evidence. Which, funnily enough, is Science Party's kind of core principle that all of their policies need to be based in evidence. It's kind of like applying the scientific method to the political system. Meaning rather than making policies that will, um, you know, get the most votes from the populace or rather than making policies that keep your supporter base happy, it's all about what evidence we have and that becomes our policy. Like, we all know this two-party system sucks. Like, the whole, like, left versus right politics, the uh, liberal versus conservative, you know, the lowercase l liberal. Um, and it sucks because it puts people in two camps. And then the issue with that is that you start, um, all these ideologies become very subjective and very personal and you're making decisions based on what will get the most votes, not is what the most rational. So for example, the three major parties, they have to stick to a certain type of policy and never change it uh, because otherwise they lose their supporter base. In a generalised sense, the Liberal Party is all about like business and free market and so they have to make their policy that works to that supporter base. Labour is all about like labour and unions and workers and they do the same thing. And Greens are all about environment and climate change and stuff like that and looking after the planet. And as much as I normally vote Greens, they still have some irrational policies on anti-GMOs and anti-nuclear. And so this is what uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and the Science Party are trying to move away from, this whole ideology-based thing, this whole subjective, personal-based thing, to a more rational, unbiased, scientific method. And this is why the scientific method has been the most fundamental discovery of the human race, um, because it tried to remove the subjective, personal biases of people and moved into the object. The scientific method isn't perfect or infallible, but nothing in this universe is, but at least it's constantly evolving and rechecking itself and questioning itself and updating its models of the universe to find truth. And the result of the scientific method's quest for truth and knowledge, that's what's given rise to all the benefits, the modern day benefits we have today. Our technology, our health, our medicine, it's tripled our lifespan. There's actually a very clear model now that's probably been working for a good couple of hundred years where you have scientific research that makes a fundamental discovery about the universe and then many years later that's turned into a technology and then commercialized as a product for the mass. So I feel like politics too much has become like a game today. Um, you have all these different parties that have spin different messages and marketing things to, to appeal to certain bases. It's like a marketing exercise. And while the, the concept of representative democracy kind of still makes a little bit of sense, there's still a lot of holes in it because you're, you're putting a lot of trust in the personal biases and opinions of one person. So for example, if your political representative isn't scientifically minded and they're just going off their personal biases and personal opinions, that's going to very heavily affect what policies they vote on. Like two big ones, climate change and gay marriage. I, I feel like the biggest reason why those things haven't been enacted yet is because of personal biases within politicians and their parties. I mean, we have all these politicians around the world who are like, I don't believe in climate change. It's like, that's not how fucking science works, mate. You can't just cherry pick what you like and don't like. It's scientific fact. There's a consensus that's happening. I think we've been like, this is the hottest year on record. Every month it's like the hottest on record. We need to fucking do something about it and just do it now. And shit, like on climate change, even if the overwhelming amount of evidence and the overwhelming amount of consensus in the scientific community, if they're all wrong, who cares? We still make the world a better place. Like burning coal to produce electricity and burning gas, like oil in our cars. It's so primitive, it's so dirty, it's so nasty. Don't you want to move to a future where it's just electric and awesome? And we have the technology now. Like the technology is moving far faster than the political system can keep up with. Um, you know, in, in a four year election, like uh, political cycle, technology has doubled twice. Meaning whoever gets elected this Saturday, over the next four years, solar power will, will double in efficiency and kind of like halve twice or like a quarter <laughs> the price per one. And I'm still certain that uh, driverless cars will be legal and everywhere. Uber will buy up every single possible driverless car manufactured within the space of three years. Um, anyway, the next round is, uh, so, so things like gay marriage. I think that's another thing where people's personal religious biases come into play, people's personal political biases. Just give people personal freedoms, legalize it. Um, okay, sorry, my, my, life is, my life and discussions have been like politics for the past month, so it, it's, it's amazing how heated these discussions get. Let's talk about the future of governance. 
So I still feel like our, um, our political system is very much like a monarchy where you have a very small subset of people who are kind of in, in charge and controlling the population or at least trying to, you know, do the best. But if you've been watching these videos for a while, you, you know that I subscribe to the whole like self-organizing system, the whole bottom-up thing, the uh, ant colonies, beehives. I, I feel like humans need to go towards that, that end. The beauty of things like the internet and our global economy and the reason why they work is because they're self-organizing. No one's uh, you know, coordinating everything from the top down. It's a very bottom-up system. So we're discussing this last night, a mate of mine is um, really big into Flux, and I love them as well, they're pretty cool. But still, vote Science Party as the vision, and then vote Flux as the tool for changing the system. So where I can see Flux going is becoming a global governance DAO, a DAO, a Distributed Autonomous Organization on the blockchain, um, for everything from local issues to international. Because the thing is, we live in an exponential time. Technology is doubling uh, pretty much every 18 months now. And if we have a political system where we only get a say every three, four years, that's not going to work. So we need to decentralize governance, not just like political level, not just like federal state, but also local council and even down to like the strata level and like street level, you know, fix that pothole. How do we do that? It's moving, it's moving the entire human species globally, not just in Australia, um, to a more self-governing, self-organizing system uh, to work out how to solve issues at local scale and globally. If you think of like governments and political organizations and business organizations now, they're very much a pyramid, yeah? Whereas a small subset of people who then are meant to somehow coordinate and understand what the rest of everyone wants. I think in about 10, 20 years, we'll end up having this kind of like amorphous um, global governance AI DAO that works for everything and everyone just plugs into that system. So the way Flux works is you get a vote on every single bill um, before Parliament, um, and everything is re recorded and stored on the blockchain, so it's public and transparent, and everyone gets like one vote per bill. But the other cool thing is like it actually still enables the representative democracy um, with incentivization to move towards a meritocracy. So you can say, I have this vote, but it's not really the issue that I know enough about. So like on this particular bill or this particular issue, what you can do is say, okay, well, I don't know enough about this topic, um, but I know that this lady is a trusted expert in the field, so I'm going to give her, my vote to her. I think the biggest issue with this whole thing, the whole flux thing, is that um, voter apathy and uninformed voters. So, I mean, most politicians don't even read the bills, so how do you expect average citizens to do it? And the best solution I thought of last night when we were discussing this was that, well, why don't we just, like, um, decentralize governance down to more of a local personal issue? Like, rather than voting on big, big topics, you're voting on daily stuff. You look at the Brexit vote, for example, where uh, the UK voted to leave the EU. Uh, that was a massive, like, let's just get millions and millions of people to vote on a yes or no thing. Perhaps that type of like large-scale voting, yes, no, on a big topic, is, is not the way we should be going about things. Um, maybe we need to do things more localised, smaller votes, uh, bottom-up. So it's like, as a super local example, um, so you know Strata, the, the people who own all the apartments in your apartment block, or all the people who live in your apartment blocks, imagine if you could all vote together to solve issues. Um, so say there's like, uh, a tap is running, or there's a light out, or you want to vote on something, or you want to fix something, or improve something, you can all do it together. And using the same global governance DAO that everyone's plugging into, everyone gets one vote, one say, and you can vote on what you want to do, but then also assign funds to a person to make that thing happen. Like part of everyone's rent could go into a, a wallet on address on the blockchain in this DAO, um, and then you can then vote on where that money goes to. Like, what do you want to fix? Do you want to fix the light bulb? Do you want to do something else? Maybe you all vote to build a, uh, a community garden or something in your, in your apartment block. Maybe you vote to like paint a wall, like whatever. It's very localized issues, but you can see this on a macro level scaling. And if you started this like local groundswell um, kind of governance model, um, I, I feel like everything would trickle up rather than having to have big top-down voting decisions. Perhaps you could remove like you know at least half of like the bloat and the overheads, and the admin costs of governance. Um, so it it helps from the, the conservative side, like smaller government, but it also helps in the social. So I think we can move to a global governance DAO like this, this model. I don't know how, it's going to take a long time because we're so entrenched in the current model. I think it'd be awesome because it actually empower individuals to have a say on a daily basis. So I think a global decentralized P2P governance DAO would result in a much more free, resilient, and agile global citizenry capable of uh, tackling the exponential technology and pace that lay ahead. So snap your own thoughts to add future. This Saturday I'll be voting, uh, voting one science party for the scientific method in politics and the vision, and voting two flux party to decentralize global governance.